You're listening to the Eskimo Empire Podcast, a proud member of the Canadian Football Podcast Network. Welcome to the Empire. It's the Eskimo Empire Podcast. Here's Mike Riley, takes the drop, waits and throws, and he's going deep downfield, and Darius Bowman, oh, oh my what? goodness, what a catch by Darius Bowman, you won't see many better than that. Franklin, Kazilstra, touchdown Eskimos. Pressure's coming, oh Levi Mitchell goes down, there's a big play for the defense, somersaults for everybody. Welcome back to the Turf District for episode 110 of the Eskimo Empire podcast. My name is Andrew, and thank you for downloading, subscribing, sharing, and spending some time with us. Uh, find all of the links to our social connections uh, on the website, eskempire.ca, and we are one of the many Canadian Football Podcast Network shows. Make sure you check all of those out as well. We have a lot on the show this week with a recap of the Esk's massive comeback win, uh, some Esk's news, a uh, brand new history segment, the CFL scoreboard roundup, our pickums for this week, and a brand new featured fan. But first, as always, my favorite hoarder of all things Esk's super fan, Mike. I got a couple things. Just a few. Yeah. yeah, I know. I just I, I couldn't think of a good one this week, so that's what I went with. That works. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, what's new, man? Uh, well, obviously we won, so that's a great thing. Very we are positive. definitely streaky. We're good, streaky. Yes. No kidding. The least. No kidding. Seven, then six, then three. Um, yes. Let's just you know have four more. Exactly. Please. All right. Well, we started off the show here, super fan, with uh, with a hip tune. Yeah. Uh, as we recorded one day before uh, the passing of Gord, so we weren't able to talk about it last week. And I did want to do a bit of our tribute this week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, we talked about it on the Periscope. Truly, just an iconic Canadian band that, uh, for all their success, stayed Canadian, stayed true to their roots, and were always very proud of where they came from and where they were. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and I mean, so many good tunes as, as they've played so many over the past week. Yeah. Uh, it's just been uh, a flood of memories for me going back to uh, a lot of the days listening to the hip. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I remember when Up To Here first came out, I, th- I thought the first EP was great. Up To Here just blew my mind and it just kept getting better and better. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I said I only got to see them once back on the Fully Completely Tour at the Agricom. Wow. Yeah. It was uh, <laughs> a big uh, crowd. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was it was an amazing show and, and just you could not stop watching Gord Downey on that stage. It doesn't hurt that, you know, the rest of the guys just stood stock still. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, while, yeah. <laughs> while Gord sort of walks around and just, you know, right in the middle of um, New Orleans is sinking, he broke into uh, Tokyo by Bruce Coburn. Oh, Just nice. kind of in the middle of the song and then went back at the, to finish it off. And just, again, a little nod to another great Canadian icon as well. So, um, Well, a couple of things I did want to mention. Uh, Superfan, you've become famous. You uh, <laughs> got a shout-out yeah. on an Esks video from the one and only Quabina. Sorry. Yeah. That was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool. I, I found out because, uh, I mean, usually I watch the Athabasca U trivia things obviously yeah, yeah i love those when they come out but uh the esks tagged me uh, as soon as they were put it out and said that there was a, a shout out to me and i'm like what so i was at <laughs> work and i'm like awesome. okay i gotta watch this so. <laughs> yeah that Hold was on a sec people <laughs> you can wait a sec exactly. i got a shout out on an eskimo video <laughs> so yeah that was kind of funny to watch and uh yeah it was kind of fun it was interesting there was a lot less esks kind of trivia in there than it's more Edmonton or Alberta specific yeah, kind of stuff. which is great for rookies. I thought that yeah. was actually really funny, but I, I just love the fact that not only did he just say Mike, he's like, super fan, Mike, I need you. Like, that was... <laughs> That was Help perfect. Me, You're my only hope. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, the Star Wars references begin. Exactly. Um, so another thing the Eskimos are doing this week, and, and I thought we'd just talk about this early, um, the Strike the Sea that they're working on this week. And you saw the video where they uh, bleeped out every time they said that town to the south of us. That's right. So in, in honor of that... We're going to do the same thing. So every That's time right. that we mention Calgary in this show, we will be using the appropriate fire trucker bleeper. 
Absolutely. And Eskimos, if you feel like you might need something different instead of a bleep sound, we're happy to lend the fire truck. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's what we do. That's becoming, again, a good iconic Canadian symbol. I really should. Yeah, it's (laughs) the best emoji on the entire block. That's true. That's what I'm saying. All right, let's introduce our guest, shall we? Uh, A regular at the Empire Tailgate, uh, and of course always uh, is coming with his wife. It brings us lovely cookies. Uh, (laughs) Welcome to the Turf District, Sean. I'm so glad you could join us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, so let's start to just getting to know you a little bit more. Um, when did you first become an Eskimo fan? It was probably when I first started really paying more attention and, and kind of following it a little more. Uh, it was probably around mid nineties. Okay. Um, kind of around the Danny McManus nice. um, time and uh, didn't get out to too many games in the beginning. I, I think the first one that I remember going to anyway was, um, I think it was the 98 season. So Rod Connup had just retired from the Eskimos. Right. Okay. Yeah. And he actually won the 50 50 that night. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, awesome. I, I thought that was hilarious. Um, I mean, I, I don't remember what the, what the result of the game was, but I, that, that part just kind of stuck with me that, you know, it's kind of funny that plays for the team for so long and ends up on the wall of honor and everything. And, and, uh, and made more off the 50 50 yeah. one night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I, I, mean, I, I kind of follow, followed it fairly well through kind of the, the mid 90s on. Mm-hmm. Um, bought my season tickets for the first time in 2004. Nice. And uh, hooked ever since. Awesome. Awesome. And where yeah. do you sit in the stadium now? Uh, we are in section R. We're in row 17. So we're, we've got some pretty, we've got a pretty good vantage point. Good there. seats. No he, kidding. He was, or unfortunately, we're on the, the visiting team side. So yeah. Yeah. anything that uh, happens on the Eskimo side, like, we don't really see until highlights after the fact. But uh, It's okay. It's really quiet on the sidelines oh, yeah. for us. <laughs> I thought so. Yeah. I mean, very, very little is said, really. Well, well, I mean, it's all right. Yeah. We'll get there. Oh, I, <laughs> well, <laughs> Although you, you like with sitting on the visitor side, you end up uh, getting the the teams when they when they end up winning a game and they get they start beaking to the the fans in the stands and sure <laughs> and so <laughs> and, uh, so a few games not so fun but otherwise yeah. it's good yeah 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 okay I, I can see that you get a game and a show right <laughs> exactly <laughs> nice. So uh, again, we've gotten to know you from coming around at the tailgate and and visiting us, which is great. Thank you again for coming down and, and supporting the tailgate as well. It's because you've got to a lot of games. What do you think of the whole tailgate experience before the game? I didn't actually know that they had it last year as well. Um, yeah, it was a pilot last yeah, year. Yeah, uh, uh, but it's been great. I mean, we're we're us- we're usually at the games when the gates open anyway so right. why not come down a little earlier and visit with some other fans and wander around and check everybody out and <laughs> hand, hand out it's, treats it's, yeah exactly. <laughs> hand, hand out some cookies <laughs> oh i gotta tell you that or, or maybe you know margarita cupcakes oh, yes. i was gonna say yeah, yeah those those are pretty popular yeah yeah and i, I think everybody had the same reaction to them too <laughs> <laughs> They make that sound. It's like, yeah, pretty much. (laughs) I like that. That's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, they were good. Well, now, because you've been since the mid 90s, do you have any kind of all time favorite players or or any current players that you're a particular fan of? I don't think I've ever really had a, like, an all out favorite. Mm-hmm. That, that I just kind of had to watch all the time. I mean, I, I think I end up drawn a little more to the, the guys on the defensive side. Okay. Um, loved watching AJ Gas play. Oh, yeah. Um, Can't disagree. Like I, I think one, one of my favorite moments watching a game at Commonwealth is when he whipped a helmet 50 yards down the field. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't get to see Gizmo play much um, live in person, mm-hmm. um, but I mean, those those highlights are always fun to watch. When I first started going, you had guys like Winston October returning. Yeah. Right. And it was always great when you'd, you'd see him break through. And unfortunately, a lot of times you'd, it got to, the, got to the point where your first reaction is to look around the field and see if there's a flag down. <laughs> yeah, if it's exactly. But, Even with yeah. Gizmo, though. I mean, Gizmo oh, had yeah. more called back than he had. Yeah. Yeah. It's a trend in the yeah. CFL. Yeah. Um, currently, I like watching Odell and uh, Almondo play. Mm-hmm. Um, they're ridiculously good at what they do. They certainly make it look easy. Um, Absolutely. I know last year when I was planning planning my uh, a silent auction, I'd actually just posted on Twitter out of the blue, just throw it out as a shot in the dark, why not, and tagged a bunch of Eskimos players in, in a post looking for silent auction items. And uh, Tony Washington had replied, and he, he just sent me a message. He's like, what do you want? <laughs> Wow. He's, he's like, I'll get it for you. And it's like, I have no idea. I'm like, I honestly wasn't expecting an answer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, 
he's and he came back a couple of a couple of days later and he's like well how about a team signed paul and wow. he took he took one of the balls that he had at mm-hmm. home and took it in the locker room and got it signed by everybody and awesome. that's amazing yeah. tony was so good in the community as yes. well and uh, hamilton's lucky to have him Absolutely. not only on the field because i think it actually did help their season when it he did. got there but uh, definitely off the field in the community, both uh, him and his wife are, are so good in the community. Talking about things like the sign ball and everything else, you've auctioned some of these things off. Do you have anything at home that's your own that's kind of one of your favorite bits of Eskimos or CFL memorabilia? I actually don't really have that much of my own at home, um, <laughs> <laughs> partially because I don't have the room for it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've, I've picked up things over the years from going to Grey Cups and stuff. Like, I, sure. mean, I've, I always make sure to get a program and, yep. and little things like that just to say. For a while, I, when they were still good at throwing them into the stands, I'd, I'd catch a, a foot, at least one football per season, and mm-hmm, sure. Um, so I've got a bunch of those laying around. But uh, yeah, no, I, I don't really have too much of my own just yet. If if I had more space, I'd probably have a lot more. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how that does fill up yes, space for sure. Yes, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, well, we ask every fan that we have in here, um, and I know you've heard the question, so uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to know what, what you think, though. What does the Eskimo way mean to you? I think it's just kind of going about things the right way, handling yourself with, I guess, the, the only word that's coming to mind is class. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but the players do things right on the field, off the field, and that, that kind of translates to everyday life. Like, I mean, handle yourself with your family and take care of everyone you're in contact with and live well. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, uh, let's, uh, I do want to mention as well, because uh, obviously, like Mike said, we have met you a lot of times, Mm -hmm. but you're doing an auction right now. You've done some silent auctions that support uh, the Stollery Children's Hospital. And right now you have uh, an Odell picture that is on your uh, Twitter for, it's up for basically a Twitter uh, auction bid. And uh, it's an amazing picture. If you haven't seen it, make sure you go out to the Periscope where you'll be able to see it there, uh, signed by the mayor himself. It's framed up beautifully. It's got a little pin on there and everything. Uh, so make sure that you go there. And it's uh, Sean Sproul, right? Is yes. That, so it's S H A W N S P R O U L E. You got it. Oh, look at me go! <laughs> wow. Uh, so oh, head head over there and uh, and make sure you throw in a bid on that. It's it's amazing. It's and a great photo. Right now, it's just sitting at seventy five bucks, which is a super massive deal for that so uh so make sure you get in on that yeah absolutely uh, and again you have until wednesday so by the time this comes out you should have a few hours left go check it out put in a bid and uh, you can maybe take it home absolutely uh all right let's get to a bit of esks news shall we uh, yes uh, the rookie list came out for who would be eligible as a rookie for the eskimos uh quite a list for us uh, yeah. we've got uh, nate bahar uh, kwaku boateng of course uh terrence bullet arjun colhoun uh Chris Edwards, Jordan Hoover, Christoph Hakuna Matata, or shall I say Malamba Shimonga? That took me a minute. <laughs> Ladarius Perkins, one of the many Adarii. Yes. Jean Samoa, and uh, of course, Duke Williams. So yeah. uh, it's quite a list. Uh, Sean, if you had to pick one out of those, who would you put as your Rookie of the Year nominee from the Eskimos? I hadn't actually seen the list yet, but um, with what you named off, I think my my first instinct would be to go with Kwaku, um, especially over the last few games. Like, I mean, he's he's been outstanding. I know he he had a, a rush or two against BC on the weekend and just blasted through the line like it was nothing. And yeah, absolutely, absolutely, super fan. Where did you go in there? Yeah, I, I think there were certainly a lot of talented people in this list. Uh, part of the problem is they didn't get a lot of chance to play due to injuries. Some of them did. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. even guys like uh, Duke Williams had a few games where he was off. Chris Edwards, I thought, had some really good moments, uh, not only on defense, but especially returning. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, he's been injured. Yeah. Um, Christoph Malama shimanga he didn't get to start until later. Right. Um, but he's, I think, started to really come round into the, some of that position. And of course, Arjun Colhoun. I mean, that guy is a beast on the corner. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, I mean, anyone that knows the podcast and listens to us knows we're <laughs> huge fans of Earthquaku. I think this is a guy that's proven that he deserved that first round tag when he was mm-hmm. so the first lists came out of the projected draft. Uh, and the fact that we caught him at number 40 or 41 overall in the fifth round, that's just got to be one of the biggest steals we've ever had for sure. 
Absolutely, absolutely, and I, I, I would say Earthquake, you hands down. Uh, the only I, I and honestly, I mean, these guys are great. Yep. Um, and, and Hakuna Matata definitely. I, I want him to win just so I could mean say that our rookies mean no worries. But right, it's <laughs> I, I do think that um, I would have loved to have had Colhoun play a whole season and not be injured. Yep, because I honestly think it would have been a massive race between those two because Colhoun yeah. was. Playing has playing lights out when he's been playing. Yeah, and again, Duke Williams is another guy that I mean, he's sure. had some outstanding stuff. Yes. Terrence Bullitt, I thought, is is one of those guys that really doesn't get the credit he deserves mm-hmm. uh, when he was playing, but he's been injured for quite a while now, so he's kind of out of people's minds, right? Yes, yeah, very true. And, and then, of course, Nate Bahar didn't really get much. I mean, he came in late, so he hasn't really had a chance to see much of the field next year. Maybe that would be a different story. So Yes, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, in, in Across the CFL, is there somebody that you would pick for a rookie of the year? No, it's Quaku. Did you say, say Quaku? It's Quaku. Okay. All right. Uh, I think he's going to have tough challenge. I think Richard Leonard out of uh, yeah. Hamilton has a really good shot at that, actually. Yeah, he's, absolutely. He's had a, a monster year and on a team that's not that great. So, mm-hmm. or getting better now. But anyway. Uh, yeah. Just trying to imagine if June Jones had been there at the oh, beginning of the season. Oh, man. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, go Quaku. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, go to our depth charted depth chart adventures for this week, shall we? Oh. Um, <laughs> As always, you're just holding your breath every time it comes out. So uh, in came uh, Hoffman, Ellis, Woodman, Hazelton, Colhoun, Perkins, Batiste, and Bowers. Uh, and yes, I said Ladarius Perkins, which, of course, all of our eyebrows went up. Uh, as out was C.J. Gable, mm-hmm. uh, Chris Edwards, Joel Figueroa, Duke Williams all went to the one-game list. Kashama and Moore went back to the PR. So a lot of big moves. That that Gable move, I think, though, caught us all a little bit by surprise. Yeah, I mean, having him and Figueroa both out for this game, yes. uh, that is, is huge for our line. You had to make a couple of different shuffles. Kelly moved from right tackle to left tackle. Batiste went in for Kelly. And with Gable out, I mean, he was just on a tear. And the blocking, like yeah. both sides of things, right? Exactly. Running and blocking. Yeah, yeah, and even catching. So, I mean, it's just, it definitely hurt the, the game. I don't think this game is even close if those two guys are in. Yeah, I tend to believe the same thing. Yeah, yeah, that offense would have been a very different beast. Mike would have had an extra steamboat, not to mention, I mean, Gable's been doing 100, 150 yards a game. Yeah. You know, that, that makes a big difference. Not that Perkins was necessarily terrible. No. It's just if you're getting 46, 60 yards, that's, you know, not quite the same as 120, 140 yards. No kidding. Plus, again, the blocking. A guy that loves to block as much as, as White does. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, we've already started, so let's uh, let's get to the game. It wasn't pretty again, uh, but don't uh, the end pretty. was uh, very exciting. Uh, if you're an Asks fan. Yes. Um, it was, uh, you know, the asks, you know, well, I guess kind of pardon the pun, but roar back to uh, win the game 35-29 in overtime. Uh, Sean, give me your first impressions of the game uh, as you're watching it. I mean, going through the first quarter, I uh, I, th- I thought it was going to be a walk for Sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, Darius was back to his normal self, and Riley was finding him at every opportunity. And uh, the, the way the first quarter went, it... Uh, it didn't look like it was even going to be close. Yeah, I think we all kind of felt that. <laughs> yeah, we thought, wow, twelve nothing. That's actually flattering the lions. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. So then, yeah, the wheels kind of fall off, and BC cool. goes on a twenty-nine to one run, which, uh, I, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I was a touch frustrated. Yeah, it just seemed like this is really working for us. Let's not do it for a while. <laughs> That's exactly you know. right. Whatever we do, let's not go to the thing that was working. Now, to be fair, we don't know because we're only seeing the TV view. You'd have to talk to someone who was at the stands. Were they starting to double up on, on Bowman because he was starting to have that success so they couldn't right. go to him? We don't know. Um, but it certainly didn't seem like they were doing the things that were working for them. Right. Whether it's it's Bowman or just in general. And then not even seeming to work in uh, Zilstra. No. You know, until later on, it just seemed very strange. So I'm like, if they're covering Zilstra because he's been such a force this year, mm-hmm. 
then Bowman should be open in, in the first quarter he was. So if they started covering up on Bowman, why not go to Zilstra and, and make them have to have that choice? But is it me or did Zilstra have a bit of an off game? Uh, well, I he mean, certainly he, done he, returns. He had, a, he had a push-ups. He had a, the fumble on the returns. And he did have – I think he ended up with three catches. Yeah. Um, of course, one was for the two-point conversion, which was really great. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for that. But it did seem that he just – what. Wasn't in that space. Yeah, yeah. I, I just have never been a big fan of him being a returner anyway. Yeah, well, sure. I mean, the thing is, if he's a returner, that means he gets the ball, gets to where he ever he gets to, and then he has to go right on offense. Yes. So you're already getting a guy who's going to be tired at that point. Right. And he also doesn't have that breakaway speed. Like I know that Kayla had talked about it last week. Getting someone like a Bryant Mitchell doing returns would be yeah. because he's got some speed. Oh, he's got wheels. Yeah. Or maybe Hazleton or someone like that. Like, can we get a chance to get him? practicing catching those kicks and yeah. seeing if he might have a shot at it because that could make a huge difference absolutely in our starting position assuming we don't get any penalties absolutely well it's okay so let's let's talk about um uh ad a little bit because i think it was a bounce back game for him you think uh nine out of ten catches because uh, he was targeted 10 times 136 yards a td a two-point conversion uh, I mean, the Joe Adarius for Autism Watch caught a nice little boost <laughs> this sure particular did. night. Uh, it's actually up to $102.10 because uh, Joe gave two extra dollars because Adarius also got his 600th catch yeah. in this particular game. Uh, before we get too far, I guess I'll just say, don't forget to check the website at AdariusForAutism.com and they're selling the t-shirts that can be signed by AD for only 15 bucks. Okay, so... But it was nice to see him back at basically full speed and getting some production again. Would you agree, Sean? Absolutely. Um, what else? I know you talked a little bit about the, the defense in the Periscope. Let's talk about the defense a bit. Did uh, What kind of stood out for you on the defense in this game? I think initially it was just how quick they were getting after Jennings. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, they were, especially in the first quarter, they were they were kind of walking through that, uh, that offensive line like it wasn't even there. Um, just kind of... Like how it's gone for the season, but yes, yeah, okay, yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, then when they uh, managed to get the sack in the end zone for the safety and the mm-hmm. uh, early on, yeah, yeah, that was big. I mean, I, I think they they did a fairly good job of holding things in check, even though the offense wasn't necessarily outputting as the yeah. game went on. I know BC ended up putting up twenty nine points still, but uh, I mean, it, it certainly could have <laughs> gotten a lot worse especially with the field position that BC was getting. Yeah. Perfect. And that was exactly <laughs> what I was hoping you would say. Yeah, because it's true. I, I actually did go back and, and checked it out. BC average start was their own 40. The Esk's average start was their own 24. I thought it was actually worse than that. <laughs> like that, that I actually went through the entire game and, and averaged everything out. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's... That's it doesn't doesn't help. Rainey was on fire this game. He was, but it just seemed like we couldn't tackle to save our lives on special teams. No, no, not at all. So uh, as kind of per usual, the uh, special teams were not exactly so special. No, I think someone should have a word with Corey McDermott. Yeah, somebody should talk to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> somebody maybe should tell him that they're not impressed. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So yes, Moss has another meltdown. Dirty Turkish shark back flat. Now we noticed that, did you? We talked about this on the Periscope, and so I don't want to get too much into it on here, but I do recommend going to the our Twitter feed and to the Periscope and and check that out, and we'll try and get that onto YouTube as soon as we can. Yeah, but. Is it getting embarrassing for you? It's just, it's less embarrassing and more just, I don't want to have to talk about it when I, there's so many other things I'd rather talk about. It, it's like the live mic thing again. Why do we have to keep talking about this? Because it keeps happening and it shouldn't. Why do we have to keep talking about something that isn't Eskimos winning football games? Exactly. Exactly. It's a bit, a bit, a bit of a, it's a bit of a frustration. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully um, he learned from his talking to. Yeah. Great. Okay, uh, I, I, I had some things there on uh, the defense as well. Um, six two and outs, five quarterback sacks, eight quarterback pressures. Euclid and Mondo were beasts all night. Kwaku, like you said, had a big game. Konar, nine tackles. I, I, I really do think that overall the defense played very well. I think they were on the field more because our offense wasn't extending drives which ended up hurting them a bit in that third quarter but i think overall the defense actually had a really good game 
across the line, uh, the defensive line. And, and John they Chick, were, I think, had another really solid game. Absolutely. He had another sack. I think that should have been a, a one split with Kwaku because I think Kwaku yes. was there at the same time. Yeah. Um, but still, a great game from Chick that's been, what, a couple in a row now that he's had some some really good playing. So that rest he had a couple, three weeks ago clearly stunned him some good. Yeah, well, let's hope for that. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, that's the, what we expected when we got John Chick six Win weeks one for ago. the Chicker. Win one for the Chicker. Now, hey, he's got a couple of wins under his belt now. Exactly. So that's good. Exactly. Okay, two quick more points on the game. Um, uh, the push-ups count was to four. I kept track of it this time. We're going to try and keep track of those. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, guys, put some sticky on there. That's, That's important. Right. And, of course, Riley passes uh, Warren Moon on the all-time yes. yards thrown list. Uh, pretty pretty amazing feat when you when you think of the number of years they were both here and mm-hmm. how they guide the team. And uh, and Riley still got some time playing left. So that that's pretty amazing. Anytime you can be in the conversation with Warren Moon, you're doing pretty good. You're doing all right. Yeah. yeah. I don't mind having him there. <laughs> No, no. and stay. I think he, that make, puts, makes him in the top 30, 32, somewhere in there in the CFL history. Yeah. So it's not just in that, you know, top two or three on the Eskimos, but he's done pretty well for himself. So just, All right, it was a giant comeback, and now it is time to go back uh, with this week's Esk's History segment. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of This Week in Eskimos History. Today we'll be looking at Eskimos milestones for the week of October 24th through October 30th. Looking at some Eskimo-related birthdays in the coming week, on October 24th, Legendary fullback Normie Kwong, 1951 to 1960, would have been 88. The next day, on October 25th, original head coach and ultimate Eskimo promoter Anis Stukas, with the team from its rebirth in 1949 through 1951, was born 103 years ago. Moving up a little more recently, on October 29th, linebacker and Eskimo Wall of Honor inductee Larry Ruck, 1985 to 1996 turns 55 and October 30th defensive end and member of the original Alberta crude line David Boone 1977 to 1983 would have been 66 and looking at some current Eskimos with a birthday this week also on October 30th defensive back Brandon Thompson in his second year with the team will be 28 And Eskimos with an anniversary of passing this week, October 24th, 2016. Last year, legendary coach Vic Rapp passed away at the age of 80. Rapp was the Green and Gold's offensive coordinator under Eskimos headman Ray Yock from 1972 to 1976, before moving on to the top job in BC. Rapp was a fiery competitor who could be known to let his emotions get away with him, as once he had to be dragged away by his team after going after Eskimos' then-coach Hugh Campbell when he was convinced Edmonton was running up the score. The next time they faced each other, a pair of boxing gloves were brought to the pregame conference to underscore the rivalry. After six years as the Lions head coach, Bobby Ackles fired Vic Rapp to go with former Eskimo assistant Don Matthews, and Rapp ended up with the Houston Oilers as a special teams coach. He stayed around the NFL until after the 2000 season when he retired to Florida. And looking at some important dates in the history of the Empire. October 28, 1939. The Eskimos' final game as the blue and white edition of the team against... Fire Trucker! ...is cancelled, ostensibly due to the weather, but history shows that lack of interest plays at least as big of a role. The team folds shortly after this as the world is plunged into the Second World War, and Edmondson would not see organized senior football in the city until the team was reborn ten years later for the 1949 season, the first wearing green and gold. And lastly, October 26th, 1975. After 22 of their uniforms and a half dozen helmets were stolen from the visitor locker room the night before, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers were forced to wear U of A white uniforms as they took on Edmondson in a 48-41 Eskimo win during a snowstorm at Clark Stadium. Larry Highbaugh ran back the opening kickoff 109 yards for a touchdown 
and took a missed field goal 116 yards in the third quarter. Defensive back Mike Fink ran a punt back 58 yards for another touchdown in the first quarter, while defensive tackle Bill Stevenson picked up a bomber fumble and rumbled 30 yards for a major. The win placed the Eskimos into first place for the third consecutive year, bringing them the Grey Cup for the first time in 19 years. Thank you again for listening to another episode of This Week in Eskimos History. Until next week, fight on Eskimos. Thank you, as always, Superfan. Uh, that was wonderful, and I'm so glad that we continued the Strike the Sea right in there as well. It's yeah, it was neat. I mean, we're talking 78 years to the day after that would have been the last game. Fire Trucker! was visiting Edmondson, so. Perfect. And now we get to play. Fire Trucker! Again. All right, let's take a quick break and come back with our scoreboard roundup and this week's Pick'em. This is Rashad Tinsley, and you're listening to the Eskimo Empire Podcast. You can join the Empire online. Find us at eskempire.ca. All of our social channels are there. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram... Plus our blogs, extra picks, and the link to our Patreon page. You can also get more history at Esk's History on Twitter and this day in Esk's History on Facebook. From the Empire team, thanks again for listening. Now let's get back to the show. Welcome back from Not Going Anywhere. Let's do a quick Empire Points update, shall we? Uh, top 10 still has Lord Touchdown out in front, but Joel has moved into the top 10, uh, and there were some great laughs this week. Uh, they were getting some points. Absolutely. Uh, great to see somebody new in that top 10 as well. Exactly. So don't forget you can earn Empire Points by sharing or leaving iTunes reviews. Uh, or just kind of generally making us laugh. <laughs> yeah. So that never hurts. I remember that the top 10 do get entered into a draw for your choice of either the rookie game-worn Shamad Chambers jersey or a signed Adarius Bowman jersey. And, of course, another way to earn points is to leave comments on the blog posts on the website. Uh, give us your thoughts or questions, and we'll hand out some points there. And, uh, unfortunately, Kayla's not with us this evening because she wasn't uh, feeling quite so well, but uh, she'll be tracking the the blogs there and of course you guys will give out points as well that's true let's get to last week's games uh, as always our out of town scoreboard brought to you by seatgiant.ca you need tickets for a cfl game or hey very soon a cfl playoff game Head on down to SeatGiant.ca where you'll find tickets for anything, and it's all in Canadian dollars. You can uh, find your tickets there. Of course, use the code FIRETRUCKER at checkout. You'll get a discount to help out the show, and of course, you're going to get the tickets that you already wanted. So let's go over last week's game, Superfan. Well, this was an interesting one. <laughs> Wasn't it? I think it? it ruined a lot of streaks in Pick'em. Sure did. But it was kind of fun to watch. So Saskatchewan taking this one 30-7 over Fire Trucker. Wow. Uh, the, the best part for me was the, the, the games and the Twitter play afterwards. Cause Duran got that pick six. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I, I mean, I did find myself cheering for fire trucker. That's much how much uh, I hate Chris Jones. Wow. But I, I, I did have to laugh when he got that. Cheering one. for or cheering against Saskatchewan? I don't, I don't. I don't know. It was just like, can they both lose? Somewhere podcaster <laughs> Ryan's like, I knew it. Yeah. But it was just. Yeah, I've just I was just Fire Trucker lays an egg. Yeah, I mean having Bo Levi pulled after a couple of interceptions and no touchdown throws. Wow. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. The only bad part of that is they're gonna be kinda of pissed off this week. Or maybe they'll be having a little bit of self doubt. Oh. I like yours better. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. That's right. Okay. Come on over. Fire Trucker. All right. <laughs> Next game. Uh, now again, another exciting finish and uh, one that helps us in our playoff race there Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, Toronto squeaking out a win over Winnipeg 29-28. Uh, that last minute, that last play, that was pretty crazy. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> that is only in the CFL. Yeah, for sure. Where you're punting it out of your end zone and executing that it lands, bounces, and rolls out so you're not getting 
doesn't matter. Oh, that wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't okay. have mattered. The the punt having to go between the twenties uh, cannot go out of bounds between the twenties. Doesn't apply if it's not from scrimmage. Oh, okay. It's only okay. when it's punted from scrimmage that happens. So if it's a return punt, it can go out in the air. Okay. And so that's why I, I thought it was funny when you looked at Medlock and he kicked it and he knew it was that and he just started started walking off the field <laughs> and it's like, hey, buddy, playing over. Yeah, exactly. Like this is they the would have got the single. Yeah, it could have kept going, right? And Moretti would have gone off the charts. Rouge to tie. What is going exactly. on? But yeah, no, that was a uh, a great play by Haralahu. I, I just I don't know if that game was broadcast on ESPN in the states, but if it is, I'm sure that just blew a lot of people's minds. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> what in the hell just happened? Dude? Why is he Why is he punting out of the end? What the hell is he doing? <laughs> What is this? Fire trucker. Loses and then this? That's great. Yes. Um, James Wilder Jr. Yeah, I was telling everybody, oh, it's like if you took C.J. Gable, he's not playing, so you should take Wilder. I didn't take my own advice. Of course, I didn't have Gable, but still. Man. I I made a very bad mistake. And at last minute, I was listening to other podcasts, and I'm thinking, you know what? Winnipeg's running out of weapons. They're going to be going to Harris all game. I'm going to put Harris in instead of Wilder. Genius. That, no. <laughs> that was brutal. <laughs> Cost me like 20 points in yeah. fantasy. That's brutal. Hey, anyway, worse. good I, for him, though. I took Bo Levi Mitchell as my quarterback. He got a whole 1.4 points. Good for you. <laughs> not so good for me. No. No, you know, exactly. Good for the Eskimos, but not good for me. Serves you right for picking Fire the- trucker. players. Winnipeg injuries are catching up to them maybe just a touch. Yeah, I mean, when you're losing some of those guys off both offensive and defensive line, Travis Bond is gone, Westerman's gone. That, that is Adams, not helping. Adams, for sure. And, and then, of course, Mo Leggett. Yeah. Like, huge. Uh, not that we would know anything about that. <laughs> not at all. No, I mean, we, you can't really use injuries as an excuse, but at least we got our injuries, the majority of the bad ones, early in the season. Yes. So now these people are coming back and starting to get into shape. I mean, we saw how long it took AD to get back into that game shape. Agreed. So, yep. I mean, imagine if he was coming back in, in week 19 and maybe isn't getting up to that speed until, you know, week 24, which is over. <laughs> so. After we win. <laughs> yeah. yeah let's, just in time, AD. Just yeah. in time. Oh, my. All right. Last game, super fan. Uh, last game. Uh, this one, again, wasn't even close and just shows how far Hamilton has come. Since mm-hmm. June Jones has come in and Masoli's been moved to quarterback, taking on Montreal and just annihilating them, 43-16. Wow. Uh, Montreal had a lead for a moment. Yeah, you know what? They had they had hope and then they kicked the ball off. Well, no, because they actually had no, the lead in did. the game. Yeah. They did for, uh, for mere moments. Yes. And then Brandon Banks said, uh, nope. <laughs> That's sure not going to happen. And boy, I was happy I switched to him. Yeah, I'm glad I took him in fantasy. Yeah, that was uh, nice. I had Mazzoli and him. That was a nice combo. Uh, that got me well, almost 50 points, actually, nice. between the two of them. So yes. thank God for that, because the rest of my team sucked. Fire track. That's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> well, I guess the uh, best info that we got from this game was uh, next week picks lots of riders in fantasy. <laughs> yeah. Anyone picking play in Montreal, just load up. Load up, exactly. Now, you can join our CFL Fantasy, actually. Uh, like I just said, I did get a little bit of redemption with Banks and Mazzoli last week. Uh, in the Eskimo Empire Podcast League, the leader is N. Hodge, Empire Andrew in second, and City of Champs in third. Uh, so find our league, join it there, and of course, join the Canadian Football Pod Network League as well and play against all your favorite podcasters. So, uh, any of you picking Bridge this week? I don't think Kevin Glenn is, but... Uh... <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> I'm not sure Chris Jones is either, but no. I still think we there'll be a lot of people picking Bridge in fantasy. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those things where Jones is so stubborn that he might no. just say, I'm going to start Glenn anyway, and then Bridge may not get in until later in the game. So, yeah. it's such a dangerous pick. Yeah, that's uh, true. Glenn could do some good things against Montreal. So could you. (laughs) (laughs) You know, no offense or anything, but... (laughs) That's right. It's very true. Yeah, This uh, is not Montreal's year. No kidding. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That was was well done. They did announce this week that, that, um, was it Wettenhall said that absolutely uh, Cavis will be back next year. Yeah, I did see that. That ought to sell a lot of tickets. (laughs) I'm happy to get the free bingo space. That's good. 
It's wonderful. It helps with fantasy, too, because we already know who all to pick next year. (laughs) Yeah, the bye weeks for Montreal will be the hardest fantasy weeks to pick. All right, uh, our pick them this week. Uh, so leaders this week are about now uh, C. Vincent, 100, Hugo Agogo in second, TXA 2002 in third, Teeley in fourth, and Titus in fifth. Uh, we've got some fun games to pick this week, uh, starting off with not an easy one. No. Uh, Hamilton versus Ottawa in Ottawa. And Superfad, you are up first. Oh, this has been a tough one. Ottawa has been up and down. Uh, Hamilton mm-hmm. has been definitely coming on stronger uh, than they have been. They've got to be going on a high after that win against Montreal and the chance to play spoiler because they can help determine who's going to get that first place, exactly. first round by in the East. Oh, man. This is one I've sort of been going back and forth on, and I still haven't actually made my pick on Pick'em right now, but uh, I'm actually going to go with Ottawa on this one. The, as much as uh, Hamilton loves to play spoilers, Ottawa has a lot to play for, wanting to get that first round by, and I think they're just going to put everything they've got into this game, and I, I think they'll squeak it out. All right. Sean, who do you got in this one? I think I'd probably have to go with Ottawa as well. Okay. Um, for probably the same reasons that, uh, that Mike said. Ottawa is trying to get that first round by. Hamilton has has certainly looked a lot better recently. They uh, it was kind of magnified a little more against Montreal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe a touch. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, I, I think Ottawa at home. I've I've got to stick with that. All right. Well, I have been toiling over this all week. I hear you. I'm, I've changed my mind about eight times, and and I'm not going to actually. Uh, I'm not going to say that I might not change my mind again. Yep. But right now, I'm picking Hamilton to win this game. I think Ottawa has broken Hamilton's heart the last two years, and I think Hamilton's going to say, "Really? Well, we're going to have as much payback as they can." Uh, and I think that they're just they're just playing on a really different level as far as the team is concerned right now. Uh, Ottawa is going to be hurting a bit with Sinopoli being out. I, I think that Ottawa is definitely going to put up a fight. I don't think. I think it'll be a very, very close game. But, but I, I, I saw Hamilton push Calgary to the brink. I saw Hamilton obviously destroy Montreal, but who hasn't done that? Uh, and Hamilton's been right there in a lot of games and they're surprising a lot of people I, I, i'm thinking hamilton pulls this one out there you go all right next game montreal versus saskatchewan and it is in the rectangle um sean you get the first easiest pick of the night <laughs> as much as it pains me to say it yeah it'll have to be saskatchewan yeah but, uh, yeah i think that's really not much more to add yeah no. it's, it's gonna be saskatchewan but i'd sure love if montreal would do us a favor and find a way to play for one week not gonna happen no, no. This one is. I mean, any any dog could have its day, but uh, I I don't know if the players in Montreal they they don't have a postseason to play for. They've just been absolutely defeated soundly by. I mean, technically the second worst team in in the CFL, at least points wise. Mm. And I I just don't know if they're just trying to get through the rest of the season, make sure they don't get hurt, and get out of here and go back home to their families. Yeah, uh, I think Saskatchewan takes it and is going to put a lot of pressure on us, being as they're two points back. They win this; they're tied with us, depending on our game. Yep, absolutely. Because fire trucker didn't do their job last week. Sure didn't. Uh, all right, uh, next game is BC versus Winnipeg. This one is in Winnipeg. Uh, I am going to be picking the Blue Bombers in this one. I think they make a bounce back at home after having uh, that close one there last week. Uh, and I think that just in general, Winnipeg is a better team than BC. So I, I'll, I'll pick the Bombers in this one. If this was in BC, I might have a little bit of a harder time with this one. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously they played us very strongly and, and got within, you know, a, a, an overtime touchdown yeah. of, of, of taking this game. So, um, but being as it's in Winnipeg, I think that they've got an extra week and Lapo is going to have that offense finely tuned with the pieces they do have. So Winnipeg takes it. All right, Sean. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to agree with you guys. It, uh, I think. Playing at home, it's a it's a tough place to come into and play. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. it's a ridiculously loud stadium. It is. Um, yeah, I mean, Winnipeg's trying to lock up that uh, that home playoff date, so there's there's that extra motivation. And after after that close one last week, it's uh, I think they'll they'll make that push. Yeah, be great if BC found a way to win. Absolutely, I mean, absolutely. If, they, if if BC won and we win, 
then the last week of the season determines second place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and and for. third and yeah. fourth. Like yeah. it's all going to really come down to it yeah. if if uh, it all comes down like that. So but it's not. Uh, probably not. Yeah. Now the asks before we talk about our pick'em, uh, let's talk about this game. Uh, they are back on the brick field at Commonwealth Stadium to face the Calgary Stampeders in the regular season wind up at home. Now the game is at five bells, so the tailgate that's powered by PowerWorks Electric will be open just after two bells. Yeah. Uh, and of course, this is the Santa's Anonymous game, so if you haven't already, uh, make sure that you uh, donate a toy or cash. Uh, Eskimos are trying to do a hundred. 10 yards worth uh, of toys to uh, get to Santa's Anonymous and most people who've listened to this show the last uh, couple of seasons know how close that particular charity is to me. Yes. Um, And uh, I I was trying to find a challenge to put out for it um, and I just couldn't do find one that did it real justice. But I, I really hope that everybody will contribute to Santa's Anonymous. Absolutely. And and, uh, and if you're not already planning for it, uh, the delivery weekend, I believe, is December 17th and 18th, if I'm not mistaken. That sounds right. Come in and grab a carload of toys and, uh, and drop them off. I, I tell you, there's nothing that'll put you more in the Christmas spirit than seeing the smiles on those kids' faces. You and bet. Uh, this will be year seven or eight for us doing deliveries uh are we do it as our whole family and it's uh it, it's an experience that we still talk about um every year before the delivery date comes up so if you haven't already uh make that plan and make sure that you're supporting santa's anonymous at the game this weekend <clears throat> now this is a great big game of course uh, against the fire trucker stampeders because we need to uh we need to keep our chances of possibly getting a home game but uh, definitely staying keeping the riders away from us as well. So let's start with you then, Sean. Uh, What are kind of the keys to this game for you? I think right off the start, you just have to kind of hold Calgary in check at the beginning of the game. And they've had quite a few games this year where they've gotten off to a quick start. Mm -hmm. Um, So kind of holding them in check and maybe probably having a quick start of your own the other way. Get, Get the offense firing right off the bat. And uh, hopefully it doesn't take a dip like last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's hope for that. It, it, I mean, if you're going to do it against any team, fire trucker, not the one to do it against. Yeah, no kidding. They they will make you pay for stuff like that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Super fan. Uh, I'd like to see the the defensive backs really start to jam some of those players off the line and disrupt those timing routes. Uh, the success that Calgary's had for years is based on that offensive line giving uh, Bo Levi just a bit of time uh, and enough time that and a quick release mm-hmm. that he's able to get the ball out nicer, you know, early and, and make sure that they get something there. And if you make it so he has to hold into that ball for a bit, that defensive line was on fireless last week. So if they can repeat that against Fire Trucker, they can make it a long day for uh, Bo Levi and the rest of the snaps. Yeah, that's good. I, we're we're already a little bit ahead in the secondary because you know we don't have the one guy that gave up all the big explosion plays the last time we played Calgary. So let's uh, my my key to this game though is is really coming down to balance in the offense. CJ Gable hopefully will be back. Oh, I hope so. And we need that balance of running and passing because the fire trucker defense is something that is. Uh, it's it's amazing this year. I do want to give them all of the credit in the fact that I believe they are the best defense in the league this season. Um, they are starting to have some, uh, some more injuries. They've dealt with injuries during the season sure. for sure, but they are having a bit of that. But the defense is the strong point of the fire trucker Peters right now. And to beat that, you have to have a great offensive game plan that is balanced and one that you can you can you know have the the running back have that. 20 touches and ha- and be productive and then be able to open up that play action to get to, to our big guys down the field. So I think that's going to be a huge part of this game. Now, who are you going to be watching in this game, super fan? Who's the one player you got on your eye? Yeah, got on my eye. <laughs> got my eye on. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, shame is easy. <laughs> I uh, mean, really, you're, you're putting your eye... Uh, uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. I, <laughs> It's been a long e season. After. I'm still angry. No. <laughs> I before he accepted. Tell me who you're going to pick. No, I got to the sea. Okay. Yeah, I, I definitely am going to be watch, focusing especially on the secondary. Uh, probably going to be watching. Aaron Grimes has been having a whale of a season oh. since he came back. But yeah. 
every game he gets stronger and stronger. And I think that being an interior defensive uh, halfback, he's matched up against some of those best players. And I think that could be a real marquee matchup to watch, pun intended. Absolutely. Uh, Sean, who are you watching in this one? I think it'd be probably see if uh, it'd be nice to see if Adarius could uh, keep what he started back up last week. With. Yes, please. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it was good to see him kind of return to form after uh, after trying to get back into it after the injury. It'd, uh, probably some CJ Gable as well. So hopefully he can break, e- even if it's just a, a couple decent runs off and mm-hmm. um, you know, help help kind of spread out that offense so it's not just pass all the time and uh, like you said balance is going to be a big part of it yeah absolutely absolutely uh i am going to be keeping my eye on the offensive line in this game uh fire trucker defensive line is uh monstrous mm-hmm. and uh, they've been playing very very well uh, i think that we are going to need to give riley that extra steamboat or two uh for the passing plays and uh, that's going to become really important i think last time when we were especially on labor day yeah uh, he just really had no time, and uh, that ended up costing us a couple of uh, interceptions, one one that was almost a pick six. So uh, I, I think that having that offensive line time is going to be very important. Uh, I'll be curious to see if we do see the return of Simeon Rotier this week or not, because that has been rumored for a couple of weeks. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if he's back in and uh, what they can do on that line. And, of course, let's, let's hope for the return of uh, Joey Figgs as well. Yeah, Joey Figs will be another great guy to get back. That's always the exciting part is on the, the Tuesday, who was actually at practice. Who is, and, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's almost like Christmas right now where he's like, oh, my goodness. Wow, I he's mean, back. Wow. Yeah, I mean, they, they talked a bit about J.C. Sherritt was on the field before the game. Yeah. And they said, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility that if the Esks do make it to the Grey Cup that J.C. could maybe even dress for it. That's that's that would mind be blown. That's, yeah. that'd be crazy. That'd be especially with that nuts. That'd be nuts. Yeah. Anyway, lots to watch in this game for sure. So uh, now let's talk about our picks. Uh, so super fan, we left with you. So you get to pick first. Uh, Fire trucker versus Edmonton. Who I've always picking? said that it's so hard to sweep a team, especially when you've got three games versus that team. And uh, I think that Edmonton has seen enough from what Saskatchewan did against Fire Trucker that maybe they've got a shot. So I'll stick it all behind my my team and say that Edmonton takes it. All right, Sean. I can't bring myself to utter the <laughs> the words that Fire Trucker would take it. So I've, I've got to go with Edmonton as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, Good for you. Yeah. It, uh, I mean, I, I'm sure Fire it'll Trucker will be a little bit uh, on edge after dropping that. That game last week to to Saskatchewan, but uh, I think if if Edmonton can weather the storm out of the gate, they'll uh, they'll have a good shot at taking it. All right, man, this is a tough one for me. It's a tough one. My mm. brain says pick fire trucker. My heart says pick the Eskimos and strike the sea. Strike the sea. Let's make it happen. Let's make it a clean sweep. I'll there pick the is. Eskimos <laughs> in a squeaker. This is, uh, but I think we leave Commonwealth Stadium happy as the last game at home this season. Um, and uh, I, I'm not sure that we do get that home playoff game, but uh, but I think we we leave the stadium happy on Saturday night. Well, I'll go with the Eskimos as well. Exactly. You know, again, if you if you have to beat Fire Trucker, I'd rather it be the game after this one. Absolutely, um, absolutely. But, uh, but yeah, I think we'll win this one and the next one. I like that. Yeah, let's there get on a roll. Is. I yeah, like I it. like the way they do this. Well, we've come to the end. Uh, thank you, boys, for coming down to have absolutely. the chat. Um, Sean, tell everybody where they can uh, find you on the interwebs and all those things. Uh, so <laughs> I'm mostly on Twitter, and uh, my name there is just at Sean Sproul. I think I spelt it earlier, yeah. so yeah. we'll just hope for that. <laughs> 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 that's, that's perfect. Yeah, that, that's, that's usually where I'm most active. So Awesome, thank and thank you for coming. And again, uh, make sure you go to his Twitter, uh, find the pinned tweet there, and place your bid on the auction yeah. for that Odell picture. 
Yeah, definitely Super worth thin. its weight. Uh, you can find me at 56 Parkies on the history at Esk's History. Perfect. And you can find me at Free Palicious and, of course, at Esk Empire Pod on uh, Twitter. Uh, find all of our social channels on our website, uh, eskempire.ca. Uh, there's blogs, of course. All of You can stream the podcasts and uh, all Lots of our pictures. pictures. Uh, you can get to our Instagram, all those things right there. Uh, our Patreon link is there as well. And uh, thanks, as always, to all of our Hall of Famers, Joe, Jedi, Brazil. Brazilian Thai, Bill, Hippie, and Turf Toe. Uh, the show will be back next week. Uh, it'll be its usual time on Monday night, and we will be joined by Doug. And we will also have a special Grey Cup report from our favorite out Easter, Jeanine. That'll be fun. Ah, I can't wait to chat with her. So, can the defense continue its upward swing? Absolutely. Absolutely. Can the offense play for more than two quarters? Absolutely. Absolutely. And are we excited to take down the Calgary Stampeders for win number four? Absolutely. Absolutely. For webmistress Kayla and superfan Mike, I'm Andrew. Remember, you can't catch footballs with your face, and we will absolutely talk to you next week. Thanks for listening. Find more great shows like this at CF Pod Network on Twitter. 